What is up guys, DZ here, and I have been having a ton of fun at Locals again because Konami allowed Locals to open back up. I've gotten a bunch of OTS packs and that's been cool. I even pulled an Arms Dragon level 10, which is pretty nice. And uh, I have been playing Altergeist the last few weeks. I went 4-0 and then 4-0 and then 3-1, so I'm 11-1 with this deck right now. I think Altergeist have a very good matchup against pretty much any random rogue deck you might encounter at Locals which I do feel makes them pretty strong, but also I feel like they have a good matchup against all of the meta decks, except maybe Drytron, especially when you go second, but all the other ones, Striker, Tri Brigade, stuff like that, this deck is going to be pretty good against, and especially if you go first, you're going to be great against. So I think that Altergeist are in a good spot, and I've been having a good time playing this deck at Locals. You know, I like this deck a lot. I don't know if my opponents like that I played this deck, but uh, it is what it is. I get that playing against Altergeist isn't the most fun thing in the world but I think this deck is pretty cool and this build in particular is a lot more refined than my giant card variant so I thought I would show it off for you guys in today's video. I know that Dawn of Majesty is coming out pretty soon but I think that this build for the most part should remain the same unless there's a huge metagame shift with Dawn of Majesty. So we have uh, three copies of Mary Nutter, three copies of Faker, three copies of the best card in the deck, two copies of Silk, one copy of Concrete, all the standard Altergeist cards you know and love or know and hate, whatever. Uh, three copies of Ash, three copies of Bell. This card's kind of awkward at uh, Locals. Not everyone plays like cards that uh, Bell is good against, but it's like good enough and it is pretty good against the meta decks. There are a number of people in my Locals that play uh, the meta decks, so it's pretty important to uh, still main deck this card, but it can be kind of dead in some matchups. Three copies of Extravagance. I still think this card is better than Prosperity. There was like one situation where Prosperity would have been better, but I think drawing two is so good in this deck that you have to play the Extravagance instead of Prosperity. And uh, the good news is Extravagance is a lot more budget friendly than uh, Prosperity 2, which is pretty cool. So you do not need Prosperity to play this deck. Three copies of uh, Spoofing, two copies of Protocol, one copy of Manifestation, the standard cards there. The uh, three Imperms still, three copies of Strike, three copies of Judgment. Not explaining this stuff too much, uh, it's been in Altergeist for a while, but uh, also I just profiled a very similar main deck from last time, so no reason to uh, go over those. Um, one new addition, so there's like three flex spots in the main deck, I feel like, maybe six if you count the bells, but uh, I have been playing uh, Punishment, and I just tried out Lost Win, so the first two times when I went 4-0, I played uh, three Punishment, then this last week I played one Lost Win, because uh, Punishment can kind of be cloggy because it's a hard once per turn, and I think it's pretty important when you play a trap deck for like every card to be uh, something that you can activate without having to worry about having too many hard ones returns. If you think of like your best hands with this deck, it's going to be a bunch of solemns because they're not hard ones returns. So if you draw like strike, strike, judgment, you can use all of those. But uh, punishment was a little cloggy at <laughs> three copies, but it's a good card. So there are a number of cards I consider to play. I think there's a lot of good traps right now. Compulse, uh, debunk is my like personal pet favorite card. I want to try that one out even more. But uh, punishment is good it's a weird card where like i don't think it's great against like striker or drytron but it is pretty good against tri brigade and virtual world and there are some pretty cool things you can do with it as you'll see in the extra deck in a moment so i think it's a good card it's also pretty good going second where a lot of those other cards that i mentioned especially like debunk that's not really a card that you can use going second so i think punishment is a bit more well-rounded than some other choices uh trenchel is also very good yeah i would consider that one as well um lost one i think is pretty good this format is pretty mid-rangey. It's actually a lot of fun. I think that's why Altergeist are so good right now. They are a mid-range deck. So uh, Tri Brigades and even Sky Strikers and stuff don't put a ton of pressure on the board on turn one. It is pretty back and forth and this deck is going to be good in a format like that. So um, I think these are pretty good trap cards, but like I said Debunk, Compulse, Torrential, all of those are good as well. Just kind of play whatever your uh, local metagame uh, calls for. And then finally we have a uh, one order, the Draw It and Win card. It's probably like the most over Overpowered card in the deck, which is pretty crazy because uh, this deck does have a lot of overpowered cards. So for the extra deck here, which uh, this time is actually a lot more correct than it was in the giant card event where I just played like what I had. So we have uh, three copies of Hexia, of course, one copy of Prime Banshee, which I make less and less these days, but it is still there. Three copies of Link Kribo, 
Only one All Mirage because we did pick up a uh, Relinquished Anima. Great card. Have not gotten to actually use this card. There was uh, a couple times when it came up, but I banished it off Extravagance. Maybe I should play two, but it is a pretty funny card. One copy of uh, whatever this thing is, the Moon Maiden. Pretty good. Um, it does come up. I'm not going to bore you guys with the uh, Silk plus All Mirage combo, but... It's worth mentioning that uh, Moon Maiden actually does a similar thing. If you happen to open like all monsters, but then you have Manifestation plus Faker, you can actually normal summon Faker, make the Moon Maiden, and then use the Manifestation on your opponent's turn to bring back the multi Faker. That's kind of cool. Hasn't come up yet. It doesn't come up nearly as much as the Silk with the All Mirage does, but you can still uh, use this with Silk as well. But I just want to point that out that this one, unlike All Mirage, does the same thing, but with multi Faker instead of only Silk. So these cards are all good. Um, so I don't play Helk in this build because there's uh, not enough room with the punishment targets, but I do still play the Selene. This card is <laughs> really good in the stack. I know a lot of decks that play the Helk into Selene into Axis Code combo need to play the Helk, but this deck already plays Spellcaster monsters, so this card's actually pretty good in a lot of situations. I like it a lot. Um, I don't own Axis Code, so we're playing the Mech Knight Avermax. You should play Axis Code in the Imitational um, Qualifier event. I borrowed my friend's Axis Code, so if you have that, you should play that instead of this. But this is like fine. Um, you can still make it with the Selene combo. You just have to go into one of uh, these cards or Link Kribo first, which does make it a little awkward if you've extravaganced, especially more than once, but it's all right. So definitely uh, play Axis Code if you have that. For the punishment targets, we have two uh, Elder Entity Natis. It's just an all-around good card that can be used in a bunch of situations. It makes the punishment into a plus one, which is obviously very strong. And then uh, one copy of Toad. So uh, my friend Lucas told me about this. He was playing a slightly different version of this deck that had like more Dogmatica cards. And he played, I think, uh, Toad as well and some other cards too. But uh, so Toad's really good. You can uh, theoretically uh, send it with punishment. And then if you have a Mellow Seek Grave, you can add it back to your hand because Toad just says add any water monster back to your hand. That is a pretty good combo. It makes uh, punishment not only good if you want to pop like two cards, but you can also use it to like get back the best card in your deck to your hand, which is obviously very good. You only need one though. I mean, yeah, you could banish it off extravagance, but these cards like take up a lot of space. And that is one reason that maybe punishment isn't the greatest choice over things like Trenchal and Debunk, but this card is pretty cool. I have not gotten a chance to use it though. seems like when I open punishment, my hands are pretty good anyway, so I don't need like the value, but it's uh, a good card. For the side deck, um, it might be a little different at a bigger tournament, not too different, but uh, uh, I think it's important to cover a wide variety of matchups if you're playing at locals. So we have uh, three copies of Nibiru, three copies of Valor, three copies of Village, and uh, the recent edition this past week was I added Metaverse back in. I did take this out. Um, all of the striker players at locals for one reason or another, and that reason might be me, uh, who knows, but uh, they all play Typhoon, not MST, I mean Typhoon, the trap card. So I am uh, constantly losing the villages, and I think it's actually really important to have the metaverse because they're playing Typhoon, so that if you open metaverse village, you can set the metaverse, and then if they Typhoon the village, you can just metaverse to uh, activate another one. So uh, I don't think you actually should play metaverse, but because every one of my locals that play strikers plays Typhoon to out the village um, I play it for that reason we also play the duster which can be a pretty good card in the uh, more back row heavy grindy matchups and three evenly I think this card is great right now I think it's especially great in this deck it always has been but yeah triggering that multi faker after getting rid of a whole bunch of your opponent's cards is just absolutely insane and because this format is so back and forth a card like evenly match really does really does just help you like auto win some matchups one copy of a pointer, so this card gets like worse and worse for me every single week. I probably will cut it going forward. It's such a great card when it works, but the problem that I've been finding with a pointer, and this did happen in the Imitational, like I opened multiple hands that were like a pointer, a pointer, village with no monsters, or village, village, a pointer, a pointer. That was actually a hand that I had in the Imitational Qualifier. You have so many cards in your deck um, after siding, if you do side into a pointer and village, that if you don't draw a monster, your hand is completely unplayable. So I really think that maybe a pointer right now isn't as good as it has been in the past. It's just such a weird card because when it works, it's like the most overpowered card in the game. You see your opponent's entire hand, you know what to stop, you trigger your multi-faker. It's just so crazy when it works, but 
I just keep breaking on it, and because the deck already plays Village, which is very good going first in pretty much every matchup, I'm starting to think the Appointer isn't as necessary, so it probably will get cut in the future, but I do like the card a lot. I have used it in the past. It's been very good, but recently I've been burned by it a lot because I just keep not drawing monsters, and I have Appointers and Villages, which require drawing, like, one monster. And I want to make it clear that, like, you can technically activate the Appointer if you don't control a monster. It's not like Village in that way. It's more just that when you don't have a follow-up after you appoint her, you basically just lose 2,000 life points, reveal your hand just to take like a minus one, because uh, where a pointer is good is when you can stun your opponent and then full combo on the next turn, get up all of your negations. So if you don't have a monster for that follow-up, the card is like complete trash. And uh, so I've been kind of uh, thinking about cutting that card for a while now. It's obviously down to one copy. I used to play three and then I played two, but we'll see in the next couple weeks here if I can find a better option. Anyway, that is all for today's deck profile. I hope you guys enjoy it. I don't plan on doing like locals deck profiles that often, but because I went 11 and one with this deck over the course of three weeks, I felt like it was worth uh, sort of talking about. I do like Altergeist a lot, obviously, but I think this deck is actually very good right now, especially at locals. So if you guys have been uh, wanting to try to play Altergeist, I think this list is a really good starting point, but obviously mess around with some of those flex spots for whatever your own local meta game is. Mine is pretty competitive with some rogue decks, but if yours is a little bit more rogue heavy, you can maybe even get away with not playing cards like Ghost Bell in the main deck. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.